What's up YouTube, Silver Dragons here, and in this video we're going to talk about silver and all of the crazy volatility we've seen over the last few days, but we're also going to be talking about gold. If you are new to precious metals, maybe you don't know the similarities and really differences between investing in silver and investing in gold, so we will be talking about that, which one is better, especially right now, so let's do it. Thank you so much for watching my video. I do sincerely appreciate it. If you'll want to learn more about investing in precious metals, or if you just want to watch awesome videos about gold and silver, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, so silver has been in the spotlight recently with the silver squeeze. We saw silver bounce up to around $29.60 yesterday uh, at closing, making it the highest silver has been in eight years absolutely crazy but then in an unexpected turn of events or maybe expected for some silver crashed down today to under 27 dollars an ounce where's it going to go from here well your guess is as good as mine but the thing is the fundamentals are still there for precious metals the stock market has a lot of volatility the economy is not looking bright the future is somewhat dim the government is creating trillions of dollars of currency we will see inflation and gold and silver are both an awesome hedge against inflation so i definitely think you should still be buying gold you should still be buying silver i'm buying both right now and i really want to talk about the differences between investing in gold and investing in silver now first off when it comes to gold i love gold Gold. gold is less volatile than silver so if you remember yesterday we saw silver spike up and gold remained somewhat flat now i know silver was definitely getting the spotlight it was in the mainstream media news but typically speaking when they're both moving up silver moves faster uh, coincidentally if they're both moving down silver also moves faster which we saw today and the best way to tell this is by just looking at the gold to silver ratio now if the gold to silver ratio is getting wider then that means silver is going down faster than gold typically uh, it could mean gold is going up faster than silver we did see that last year briefly but for the most part it is silver going down faster if the gold to silver ratio is getting narrower that means silver is going up faster than gold and we did see that yesterday it narrowed to almost 60 to 1 which is ridiculous i mean that's the lowest we've seen in quite a long time in fact just last year it was hitting all-time highs which basically means gold was overvalued compared to silver or silver was undervalued compared to gold now when it comes to the gold to silver ratio i have a general rule of thumb that i like to follow and you can do this too uh, or you could come up with your own rule but for me if the gold to silver ratio is greater than 80 i focus heavily on silver if the gold to silver ratio is between 60 and 80, I buy a mixture of both metals. And if the gold to silver ratio dips below 60, which we haven't seen in quite a long time, then I'll focus more on gold. In fact, some people are looking to convert their silver to gold if the gold to silver ratio gets low enough a lot of people sort of like to play the ratio okay so i'm just going to briefly show you how this works and this is overly simplified but for the sake of this video i just want a visual representation of someone playing the gold to silver ratio and succeeding in their goal so the goal for this exercise is to get the most gold possible okay we're either going to end up with a one half ounce american gold eagle or a one ounce american gold eagle and we're going to play the ratio to see if we can get the one ounce gold eagle okay so here's a scenario the gold to silver ratio is 100 ounces of silver to one ounce of gold and you want to buy some precious metals so here's the choice we're going to move this aside for a second you can either go out and buy a one half ounce american gold eagle or you could buy 40 american silver eagles all right, the price is uh, fairly similar on these two, especially when the GSR was around 100 to 1. So we have 40 American Silver Eagles or one half ounce American Gold Eagle. Well, you decide that you think the gold to silver ratio is wide. And so, you know, based on what Silver Dragon said, you should be buying silver. So you don't buy the half ounce. You say, no, 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 
I'm going to buy the 40 American Silver Eagles. And then you wait for the gold to silver ratio to drop to 50 to 1. Now, this isn't exact because there's premiums and other things involved, but the whole idea is now that the gold to silver ratio is 50 to 1, you can sell your silver eagles and you can buy a one ounce American gold eagle. So in that example, we ended up with literally twice as much gold as we could have because we played the ratio. Now I know what you're saying. It's not like we can actually go back in time and buy more silver when the ratio was wider. But the reason I bring it up is because I think it's very important to understand how this works. And it's very important for you to be able to decide just by looking at the ratio, if it's better to be buying silver or better to be buying gold. Now, based on my strategy, because the gold to silver ratio right now is around 70, it is okay to be buying both. So that's why I'm buying silver and I'm still buying gold as well. And if the gold to silver ratio does dip down dramatically in the near future, I will likely convert some of my silver to gold. Now, as I make the case for gold here, I know some of the stackers are older than other stackers. So if you are nearing retirement or if you're already retired, then perhaps you want something that's going to be a store of wealth that is less volatile, but you also want that hedge against inflation. And that's where gold comes in. Gold is all of those things. It has been used as money for literally thousands of years, just like silver. So it's a wonderful hedge. And if you don't want the volatility that silver brings, gold is going to be your best option. So I think that right now, when all of the spotlight is on silver, you should definitely be considering gold or perhaps buying a mixture of both like I am. Now, when it comes to investing in gold, there's several different ways you can do it. You could just buy physical gold. This is definitely the safest way. Uh, I love buying physical gold. You can hold it in your hand, store it at home, in a vault, whatever you want to do. Another way you can invest in gold is by buying GLD. Now, I personally do own GLD, but the problem with it is that you can never actually exchange it for physical gold. But it does follow the spot price of gold. So if the price of gold goes up, then your GLD shares will go up likely. If the spot price of gold goes down, then it will go down. Uh, it's about equivalent to a one tenth ounce of gold. I think the thing with GLD is that some people don't want the hassle of storing physical gold. I mean, I love doing it, but it's definitely not for everyone. And uh, it's a very simple way to invest in gold. Now, another way you can invest in gold is by buying gold mining stocks. There's tons of different miners out there, and I've covered many of them in previous videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about Newfound Gold. Now, Newfound Gold is located in Canada, and they have claimed to an unexplored district land package within the highly prospective central Newfoundland gold belt. They have excellent access to infrastructure, being only 15 kilometers from Gander, Newfoundland, which is bisected by the Trans-Canadian Highway. More importantly, they have a proven leadership team and strong shareholder base, with Eric Sprott and Rob McEwen being investors in the company. Now, Newfound Gold is included in the GDX ETF, and the Canadian version of the stock started trading around 140 Canadian back in August, and by mid-January, it had already reached $4 Canadian. However, some of the most significant news is that Newfound Gold has applied to trade on the New York Stock Exchange just last week. So so if you're looking for another junior miner to add to your portfolio, I highly suggest you check out Newfound Gold. Now, whenever I talk about mining companies, I always have to say they might be more risky than just buying physical gold, but they might be more profitable as well. There are tons of different mining companies out there. I highly suggest you do some research for yourself, see which ones fit best with your portfolio, and then go forward from there. If you want more information about Newfound Gold, I will put a link down below in the description. Now, I know we've talked about about silver and gold in this video we talked about how the u.s government is creating massive amounts of currency which could lead to much more inflation and you want to be protected against that which is why you buy silver why you buy gold it is a hedge it's also a safe haven asset according to nicoya research their calculations confirmed that the previous gold bull cycle propelled the gold price up by roughly six times Therefore, the current bull cycle should put the gold price above 6000 per ounce by the year 2025. Along the way, Nikoya expects gold to reach over 3200 in 2021 and 
4,500 in 2022. Now, I think that if you look at the fundamentals of investing in precious metals and with everything going on in the world right now, these numbers could actually become a reality. Now, the last thing I want to say in this video is just simply a massive thank you so much for watching my content. I sincerely appreciate each and every one of you. We've gained so many new subscribers over the last few days. I can't say thank you enough. Again, if you want information about Newfound Gold, the link will be down below in the description. And lastly, I'll just finish it off with my normal sign-off, and that is Silver Dragons out.